Hello and welcome to Programme 60 in this series of programmes and tutorials which focus on TradeStation Easy Language. If you're watching this video on YouTube or Facebook then please go to markplex.com that's M-A-R-K-P-L-E-X for more information and other tutorials and programmes. So Programme 60 actually consists of two programmes, one an indicator and the other a show me study. And, uh, they, uh, they are uh, involving the stochastic of RSI. So you can see here the indicator is plotting the stochastic of RSI in green. And then what I've also included is an algorithm to smooth that. And you can choose which of the two you use to calculate divergences between price and the stochastic of uh, RSI. And uh, if, a, if a divergence is found, then that is drawn using a green line, as you can see here on the chart for uh, a, a divergence um, showing potential bullish behavior and uh, be drawn using red lines at the top uh, the highs of the price if we were looking for a potentially uh, bearish divergence. So that is the indicator and I'll go through the inputs in a moment. I've also included a show me study and what the show me does is looks for uh, it looks for pivots in the stochastic of RSI and then it filters those based on a regular stochastic. So let's just go through the inputs and incidentally what I'm also going to include on this uh, page at markplex.com is an additional video for Gold Plus members which shows how to use the global value facility that's available or has been available with TradeStation since 9.1. OK, so first of all, let's look at the indicator. It's called underscore program 60. And uh, the first thing you'll notice is max array size. And this just means how many pivots we're storing in the array that we can refer to such that when a new pivot is found, we go back and compare values that many uh, pivots back. And you can put a number there, a maximum of five. Now, which stock RSI? If we entered zero, we would have the stochastic of RSI, which in the example I just showed is a rather jagged sort of green line. Or if we put one, we get the smooth version. The green and the red are the colors that we draw the divergence lines. Left strength and right strength determine how strong the pivots need to be. So for example, for a, a low pivot with a left strength of three, we need uh, three bars to the left of the pivot with a higher low, in the case of a low pivot, above that value, and uh, in this case two uh, bars to the right of the pivot with a higher low. Bar tolerance. This means that when we're doing this sort of study, oftentimes the pivot in price and the pivot in the underlying oscillator are not necessarily going to occur on the same bar. So this gives us a little bit of tolerance as to how many bars apart they can be. And as you can see, I've got this set to two uh, for the, the current screen. Oversold and overbought, they just determine where we're drawing these lines on the chart, the, uh, the dotted lines. Price is the value that we're using to calculate the RSI. And then we've got the uh, the uh, the RSI length itself, and then the smoothing length. Obviously, the smoothing length will only come into play if we're using the which RSI of one for the smooth value of the RSI. So that is the indicator, and uh, we've also got a show me study, and uh, the values here are somewhat similar. Uh, price again used to calculate the RSI. The um, Stochastic of RSI length, 14. Smoothing length, again. Which RSI, 0 for the non-smooth, 1 for the smooth. And then we've got various inputs for the regular stochastic. And as I mentioned, this is used to filter which, uh, which pivots in the stochastic of RSI are actually drawn on the chart. So the uh, price H, price L, price C, stochastic length, smooth length 1, 2, and smoothing type, they're all to do with that. And then the oversold and overbought. And in this case, they are not just, uh, in fact, not drawing any lines at all, but used to determine how, uh, how f what the stochastic value has to be for us to uh, plot those, uh, those dots on the chart at the stochastic of RSI pivot. So that's, uh, they're the inputs, um, in fact, they're the inputs, whether you apply this to a chart, radar screen or scanner, 
and uh, incidentally this program also works on multi charts but what I want to do is just go through a quick example of how you could also use this program um, within scanner for example and you can use the indicator or the the show me study so what you do is just click on trading apps you would chart, uh, choose scanner and uh, what we do then insert scan give it a name so let's just say program 60 number two say next choose your universe I'm just going to choose all NYSE say next then we're going to insert the In this case we'll just look at the indicator okay we'll find the indicator we're looking at which in this case is program 60 like so and then we need to tell it what to look for in this particular case let's just look for bullish and we're going to say display and we just need to check our inputs and these are exactly the same as the ones that we've just been going through only we now have the opportunity to decide whether we want to do a daily or a minute chart for example and then in terms of load additional data I put in 200 this will be a little bit of trial and error because we are doing in the calculation especially the smoothing calculation a lot of exponential moving averages which will require some additional bars so you'll need to um, potentially adjust that value but uh, so I'm going to just press run and uh, we'll just go through and see if we get any any results occurring what I'll probably do is just uh, pause the video and then restart because this will take a few minutes okay so we perform the scan and uh, what we're looking at here are bullish divergences and you can see a few situations where we're getting a true drawn on the chart where there has been a bullish divergence okay so that is program 60 I hope you might find it useful and uh, again if you're a uh, Gold Pass member then you might also want to have a quick look at an additional video that I'm going to do just talking about how you could use global value in a situation where you have two programs such as these thank you very much